Hey, Frank, uh, wanted to ask you about defense uh, with this team. How much do you anticipate things evolving in terms of the game plan that you generally went with last year? And, of course, it adjusts game to game depending on opponents. But how much do you think you can put in those same principles as the previous season with the new personnel? Uh, hopefully, most of the principles still apply to this team. And, uh, you know, we'll execute them at the level that we were able to uh, last year and, you know, even better in some ways. I do think we grew our scheme throughout the course of the year last year, and we were a different team uh, second half of the year and in the bubble than we were, say, the first uh, month or two of the season. Uh, even though we had a, a strong start on, the, on that end of the floor, um, we did evolve some, and um, you know that'll be the starting point for this year's team. Uh, let's go, Kyle Bloom. Hey, Frank. Um, uh, Kind of a niche question here, but um, you've talked about sort of wanting to see um, Dennis and LeBron play together. Um, what have you kind of seen of the balance of each of those guys kind of being able to, to work off each other so far in practice and, and throughout the preseason? What are your goals to kind of see um, from that combination and, and use them in different ways? No, that's a huge part of the of this year's plan is to to have Dennis out there with LeBron, uh, alleviating some of the pressure, but also his ability to play off the ball. That's what we love about him. Um, you know, they're going to see uh, you know heavy heavy minutes uh, throughout the course of the year this this year. Uh, we haven't seen a ton of it yet in practice because most of our practice so far has been sort of like drill work, more than live action. You know, or four on fours or, or things like that. But um, you know that. That combination is going to be one that, that we envision being a great one for us this year. Dave McMinniman. Frank, from the um, shortened off season that followed you guys playing in the finals, you guys starting off last year going to China, you guys having the coaching staff be a part of the All-Star Weekend. Um, will you try to do things this season to bake in some time um, for your players to be able to get away, um, you know, maybe cancel a practice here or there, or, or, or do things of that nature, just to to try to keep your guys fresh, considering so many of them um, and your coaching staff had such a long year last year. You know, um, we try to do that on a normal year. I, you know, I, I guess because of the short off season and uh, the nature of, la of the way last season played out. Um, you know, we'll be mindful of that, but you know, we, we try to do a good job, you know, all, all throughout a regular season, or I should say a normal season of, of making sure our guys have those types of opportunities and that they're staying fresh. We do enough work, um, you know, to improve every day uh, without, you know, mentally fatiguing them or physically fatiguing them. And, um, you know, I think it'll be similar to our approach in the past uh, with slightly different circumstances. Bill Horum. Hey, Frank. Uh, kind of a niche question here, but I'm just wondering, um, do you have you and LeBron started having conversations? Bill, yet? what's a niche question? I don't understand what you mean. <laughs> it's like a niche question. Hey, no, no, to... no, making fun of, of 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 each other. We all need to get along on this call here. <laughs> I mean, look, I'm, I'm doing my best to not have fun on these Zoom calls that we're going to have 900 of this season. I'm just messing. Make it as boring as possible. <laughs> so. Uh, but I am wondering if you and LeBron have started having conversations yet about um, about about his load early on and how much um, you guys are, are going to, to lean on him early, um, knowing it's a long season, knowing that you now have him for, for three years through his 20th season, like how that all might factor into those decisions. Yeah, we have had sort of preliminary conversations about that. And, um, you know, we're, we're both sort of of the mindset like, let's just see how it plays out, you know, and, and evaluate each, each day, each week, how he's feeling and uh, not lock into any, you know, any set plan. Uh, but, you know, to, to have a sort of a, a normal build up of getting his legs back under him, um, you know, getting get him used to playing, uh, playing live basketball again and, uh, you know, just evaluate where he's at, you know, on a day to day, week to week basis before we make those decisions. Uh, about the you know the the management plan of of um, you know uh, you know how how much he's going to participate early in the season versus the late in the season you know all those types of things it's really just kind of be a day to day approach. Dan Weinstein. Hey Frank, uh, 
hiking? Sorry, I'm trying to gather myself after. Bill just looks so proud of himself, doesn't he? Um, <laughs> I, I think just a, <laughs> a housekeeping question. Did you guys have any new absentees or any returnees to practice today? Uh, same group as yesterday. Okay. And, and then secondly, kind of along the lines of what Bill was asking, LeBron's defensive buy-in last year was, and his intensity on that side of the ball was such an important part of the guy's identity really from day one in the season. If, if you guys are scaling back and stuff like that, um, are you going to have to find that sort of imprint elsewhere or, or do you still expect him to kind of be that guy on defense that he played last year? No, I, I still expect to see uh, you know that, that contribution from LeBron. Um, I don't think he would have it any other way. I mean, everything I've seen from him and my experience coaching him with the L.A. Lakers is – that is, uh, his IQ is second to none with defensive coverages and uh, rotations and what has to happen to execute at a high level on that side of the ball. And, you know, his, his effort piece has been uh, along the same lines. You know, um, there's a high care factor there. And, um, you know, I would expect that to be the same this year. Chris McGee. Hey, Coach. What's up? How you doing? Tough to follow Dan, who looks so relaxed on his couch. But um, you're doing a great job, my, though, Peter. My question—it's—it's uh, it's really just a basketball question. Uh, integrating kind of the new pieces uh, to an already implemented system, and then the challenges that you guys face as a staff uh, to kind of curtail to those guys, like like a Marcus Saul, right? He's going to play a little different than than Javale and, and Dwight. So if you can speak to kind of those challenges, and, and, and maybe the challenges aren't the right word, but excitement for, for a staff. To yeah, those you know we've got several players on our team that give us a different dynamic, and um, you know I think the coach's job uh, in any sport is to make uh, slight uh, adjustments and, and tailor your your scheme and your system based on your personnel. And we'll do the same uh, type of thing with uh, with these guys. And you know I, I've just uh, been been really impressed, um, not only with the professionalism of our new guys, but you know, the different skill sets that they bring to the table with Mark's passing at the top of the key and three-point shooting at the big position. You know, Trez's ability to finish on rolls and to post uh, basically anybody he wants to and be effective. Uh, Wes Matthews' ability to make plays uh, both off the bounce and in catch-and-shoot situations and, and, his, and his defense. And you know, obviously Den Dennis's speed is, is just uh, something that very few teams uh, possess um, you know that type of weapon offensively and and and, and to be honest I'm, I'm almost more excited about his defensive speed you know because the containment piece in this league you know that makes it so hard to uh, to help without giving up threes you know I think that's going to be a huge factor for our, for our team as well so uh, we are uh, excited and, and in enjoying the process of seeing how these slightly different skill sets uh, fit into this year's team and how we'll be slightly different Bill yeah, Coach, uh, back to the LeBron load management issue. Isn't it more important to keep this team healthy for the spring than anything that happens in the regular season, given the fact that you're a veteran team and, you know, the home court advantage is not as important and all that? Yeah, there, there's no doubt. You know, the, the goal of, of every year, but I think in particular this year, uh, is to, to make sure we're healthy and whole going into the going into the playoffs, you know, and um, – you know, that's not to say that we're, we're going to take the regular season lightly in any way. I mean, the guys that are on the floor are going to compete uh, and, have, and, and try to recreate the identity of playing harder than our opponent every night. But um, you know, our, our, our goal is definitely to make sure that we're healthy um, uh, come playoff time, for sure. Thank you. Um, just a few more here. We'll take uh, Melissa Rowling. Hey, um, first of all, I was just wondering, LeBron told us that he looked, or that he felt sore as hell. How did he look uh, today? And then I was also wondering, is LeBron a guy that you have to kind of protect from himself, or does he kind of step up and say, I need a break? Or is he one of those guys who you have to say, I need to take him out because he's just going to play through everything? I think he does a good job of, um, of, of self-regulating. Uh, what the right amount of work is uh, for practice uh, this time of year, throughout the regular season. Um, you know, I, I made a joke with him last year that you know he basically should be retired from practice 
uh, because of his tenure and his years and all that stuff. And, uh, you know, he's, we're, we're always going to you know, follow his lead with how he's feeling. Um, we have to pull him back more than ask him to work, for sure. And, um, you know, it's just part of him. He, you know, he wants to do enough to stay in rhythm, you know, so he can be effective on the floor uh, without overdoing it. You know, and I think he has a good balance and a good feel for that. And then if I may, how does he look or how has he looked today? Yeah, he looks great. You know, I mean, he's, he's moving well. I mean, look, he's the best player in the world, you know. So, uh, like everybody, we're, uh, you know, we're coming off of an off season where we're not playing pickup games leading into this. And, um, you know, so everybody's got, you know, just some things that they're, they're working out uh, and getting themselves, you know, back in shape and getting their legs under them. It looks good. Uh, Brian Kamenetsky. Hey, Frank. Um, kind of to go back to what Mike asked you at the beginning, uh, when you talk about principles, like defensively or even offensively, and the strategies that go along with it, is there a difference between the principles and the strategy? Um, and then if there is, how long does it take to figure out what those strategies need to be with the personnel uh, to be able to match the principles? Well, I think all that stuff evolves uh, throughout throughout the course of the year. The you know the principles of a great defense, you know, they, they really don't change very much. I mean, I think we've made some adjustments um, to those principles based on you know how the league has changed their style of play over the last five years or so in the, in, in the, the three point shooting era. Um, you know, the strategies come into play like every year. You, you measure what uh, you know what your your uh, your roster, your current players' strengths and weaknesses are on that side of the floor, and um, you know again, you, you tailor it to things that they they can do well and, and put them in position uh, to succeed. So uh, that stuff will all evolve throughout the course of the season. Thanks. Last question, Jordan Richard. Hi, coach. Um, can you just talk a little bit about Taylor Horton Tucker's development? You know, I know he's just turned 20 a few days ago. Can you just talk about what the preseason and season are going to mean for him and just his maturity level to be on the team, championship team, and so young of an age and be the youngest on the team? Well, I would say he continues to impress. You know, I mean, the, the, the young man has a great attitude, a great spirit, uh, comes to work every day with humility, and, um, you know, he just goes out there and, and kicks people's butts. I mean, quite frankly, he's, he's just uh, – He's a heck of a talent. Um, he's had a great two days here. I'm coaching him harder than uh, you know the rest of the players on the team, a lot of the veterans, uh, because I think he's uh, he's got a chance to be really good for us immediately, uh, not just down the road. And um, you know, couldn't be happier with uh, with the start that he's off to. Thanks.